Hi guys! I'm in trouble. My Vespa PX tipped over and after this it does not start. Now I try to troubleshoot this issue. What do you think? Can it be fixed? Ignition is on, the gas valve is now open and the choke is activated. Let's try to start the engine. You see, the engine spins but does not start. What could be the issue? I suspect that the idle jet of the carburetor could be blocked. As this happened also some years ago, my first step is therefore to demount the idle and the main jet to clean them. To get to them, I need to demount some parts now. These two screws fix the cover of the carburetor box and need to come off. All right, I'm in. Now the air filter needs to come off. It is fixed by these two screws. So here are the two fuel jets. The jet on the left side is the idle jet and the other is the main jet. The idle jet works in the lower RPM range of the engine, the main jet on the higher RPM. This is the idle jet in detail. Basically, the fuel enters the jet at the bottom opening. As you see, the opening is pretty small, so dirt can easily block it. The air enters at the top of the jet. The fuel-air mixture exits the jet at the middle openings. The main jet works basically identical. The openings are just a bit wider to allow a higher flow rate. Now they are ready to take a bath. The solvent needs to be able to dissolve the dirt inside the jets. I use brake cleaner to do this.
enjoy your wellness bath, you little jets. The bath duration is 48 hours. So the solvent has plenty of time to dissolve any unwanted substance. To prevent the solvent from vaporizing, I put a metal lid on top. I don't want to wait 48 hours until I can proceed, but that's no problem, as I have spare jets on hand. Let's see if that has fixed the issue. Obviously not. That is really disappointing. As clean jets have previously always cured the issue, what else could be the culprit? Let's see if the carburetor gets fuel at the intake. For this, I slightly unscrew the fuel banjo. I now open the fuel valve as you see, plenty of fuel flows, so that is not the culprit. Let's tighten the banjo again. What else could be the problem? I want to check if the ignition works properly, because without ignition the engine cannot run. To do a quick and dirty test, I put the spark plug connector near the engine housing as this is connected to the electrical ground. I just need to make sure that there is always at least a tiny gap between the contact and the engine housing. Okay, I will activate the starter now to crank the engine. Let's see if there are consistent and strong sparks. Well, there were some sparks, but they were not consistent. Maybe that is the culprit. Hmm. Let's have a closer look on the CDI.
Oh wow, the connector of the white cable is pretty loose. The white cable is the ground connector to the generator, so that could be the culprit. I will push the connector down to make a better contact. Let's see if the engine now starts. Oh no, that didn't fix the issue. Maybe I have put accidentally on the connector while lifting the rubber cover. Let me think, what else could it be? Well. The CDI itself could be faulty. I have a spare CDI to check this. So the old CDI needs to come off. It is fixed by these two screws. That takes a while, but I have no patience now, so I switch to a ratchet. Well, the new CDI has shown a better spark, but now the repeated engine cranking exhausts the battery. 
so I'm not able to properly check if the engine starts now, I will charge the battery externally with a proper motorcycle charger. That will take a few hours. Okay, I'm back. Now I put the battery back in place. I pushed the ventilation hose of the battery through a gap in the corner of the holder so the gases can vent freely. And now the battery holding strap needs to be put in place. Hmm, this is a job for two hands. Now the cables need to be reconnected properly. About 80 amperes of current need a solid connection. Alright, for the next start attempt, the spark plug connector needs to get on again. Okay, that was a proper cranking, but no engine start at all. I really wonder what is going on here. I mean, the engine needs fuel and ignition to run. Let's check the condition of the spark plug. Red looks wet. When I smell on it, I can slightly smell gasoline. But the top part shows some carbon deposit. I will clean it with my spark plug brush. Let's make an ignition test with the spark plug connected to see if the spark plug works properly. The 
sparks look pretty good. So the spark test before might have given an invalid result. To continue, I put the spark plug back in. If the sparks are good, then the engine might not get the required fuel. Let's see if the engine starts if I pour some gasoline into the engine intake. I use this small container filled with fresh gasoline. Let's see how good the pouring works. Hmm, okay, that should be sufficient. Now let's crank the engine. Hooray! It starts! I have to give it some throttle, otherwise... The engine dies. And the engine keeps running. The gasoline I poured into the intake is long gone. Obviously the carburetor is able to deliver fuel for higher RPMs but not for idle and the engine start. Anyway, something is wrong with the carburetor. Let's see if I can keep the engine running in idle when I treat the idle screw. Yes, that works, but the settings are definitely out of specification. Let's see what happens if I close the fuel well. The engine suddenly cranked up the RPM, a clear indication of a lean fuel mixture in idle. I turned the idle screw back into a more normal setting to avoid trouble later on. So I'm pretty sure that the carburetor module itself is the culprit 
and not the CDI. Therefore, I can put the old CDI back in to keep the new CDI as a spare part. It is pretty neat that they printed the corresponding cable colors on the CDI. That makes it easier to connect it properly. The rubber cover protects the contacts from the harsh environment so it needs to go back on. The yellow cable is the ground of the high voltage coil and needs a proper connection to the engine housing, as it is the housing which makes the electrical connection to the ground of the spark plug. Let's ensure that the engine starts with the old CDI. For this, I again pour some fuel into the engine intake.
Of course, the spark plug needs to be reconnected for a starting attempt. Yes, it runs as seen before, so the old CDI is obviously okay. So, I can fasten the bracket nuts again. Unfortunately, I have no carburetor on hand, so I have to order one. I hope that the correct model is available. But anyways, it will take a few days until I have it on hand. This will be covered in the second part video. The new part is obviously not for free, so you can support me to fund it. You can easily make a small donation via PayPal and I think this video has at least a value of a coffee to go for you. The PayPal address is donatesurflues at gmx.net. For more details on how to donate, please see my end card and the video description with my product links. I hope you are feeling good. Like and comment. If you are not already a valued subscriber, you now have the chance to become one. Stay tuned for the second part of this video and also check out my other videos for tech nerds like you. I will see you next time. Bye bye.